this Bible. The fact that you have the gift of prophecy does not make you a prophet because it takes additional giftings of the Holy Spirit to stand in the prophetic gifts in addition to wisdom. spiritual tools in our hands let us begin to dig out the truth of the word of God for ourselves praise the Lord I'm so excited that you made time to tune in again to this very important religious broadcast that comes your way every Sunday with nothing else but the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth I trust that the series that we've been dealing with over the weeks has been a blessing and I know that uh, today is going to be an additional great information that God is going to deposit in our spirit. We have been dealing with very important issue that I believe that it is timely for the body of Christ. It is very important for the Christendom to understand because looking into the body of Christ today Dependency on men of God and prophet is the order of the day. And that has not been the desire of God and it is still not what God expects for the body of Christ. God wants us to mature, grow into maturity as we are taught, educated in the word of God by the fivefold ministry. So we come to the place of maturity to be able to differentiate the wheat from the chaff. And the task and that is what this series uh, seeks to do and so we want to get into the Word of God because I am very excited and passionate about this and I know that God is turning our lives around for himself father in Jesus name I pray that you hide this little clay behind the cross that the name of Jesus alone will be seen and exalted in our hearts and mind and having done all, transform us to conform to your very image, even the image of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have been dealing with this issue on hearing the voice of God. And the last week, the, one, the last part we dealt with, that is the part five, that we dealt with had to do with uh, hearing God's voice, but we centered on the still small voice, and then we touched into details on the second voice of God. The second voice of God being the Rema, that anytime God speaks to you, uses anything to talk to you through His Word, the preaching of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit inspires every individual with the now word, the exact thing we need every day. And it's, it's very important that we do not forget that Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. As he did for his people when he took them out of Egypt in the wilderness, he gave them manna as their daily bread. And when Jesus was tempted in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus replied the devil, not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds or proceeded out of the mouth of God and Jesus quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8 man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and we have dealt into details to teach on what that word is God is talking to us about Rema daily bread daily Rema he gives to us that is what I call the second voice of God. And as I get into the word of God today, teaching from the Logos, God, in the person of the Holy Spirit, the unseen personality between the preacher and the congregation, and through you, to you, audience, via uh, social media, uh, TV, or Zoom, the unseen personality will be giving you the rhema. 
So give him all your attention. I need you to call your friend, call a sister, uh, get every one of them. Let us get into it. It's going to be a great blessing to us. Let's get into the Word of God. And I am going to begin with a book uh, also on Job. Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 16. For God speak at once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. Interesting. God speak at once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, we, 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 we have been teaching and, and talking and preaching and learning about different ways by which God speaks to us. Last week, we learned about a still small voice. And I said, God speaks to us also in dreams and in visions. The other way, God speaks to us also is prophecy. And other times, is in audible voice. I mean, God speaks to us audibly. I also remember that I said that God ministering to us by the still small voice, it comes to us through many means. I mean, Elijah was an example. The woman with the issue of blood was an example. I said that studying the word of God and reading the word of God, God can minister to you by the still small voice. I also said that through meditating on the word of God, God can minister to you by this still small voice. And in prayer, oftentimes in prayer, the still small voice echoes the voice of God into your spirit. And sometimes through communication with other people, Something you've been praying for through communication with a sister, a Christian brother, a sister, boom, makes a statement and it resonates with your spirit. And you know that this is the answer. This is God talking to me. How did you know that this is God talking to you? Because your spirit bears witness with that word that it is what you've been looking for. And we dwelt on hearing. The word of God. Hearing the word of God. When it's preached, we he, he, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But today, we are going to touch on the dreams and prophecies. Dreams and prophecies. And then uh, we will see how the Lord will help us to go through it. The scripture we read, the Bible says that God kept once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. And that has been true with many of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we learn that God speaks to us through or by the still small voice. He speaks once. He speaks to us again twice, yet we don't understand him. Many times, God has been communicating to us. We have been praying and praying and praying, and God has been giving us the answers, but we don't get it. Because we go throughout the day so busy, we get so busy with ourselves. We get so busy with our work. We get so busy with our family. We get so busy with our businesses. And so even when God is talking to us, there are so many voices that come around us that we do not even, we are not able to hear the voice of God. Sometimes economic issues become a border on our mind. Challenges become border on our mind. So when God talks, we don't hear him. There are too many things that worry us. There are too many things that we go through in a day and so we don't get to hear the voice of God so the Bible says that for God speaks once he speaks to you by the still small voice because you see he is within you hallelujah he is within you so he does not need to get out of you then to turn back and talk to you he is within you and so he prefers to talk to you have communication within you so the still small voice is one of the major ways, common ways by which God talks to us. And that's why we need to develop sensitivity to the voice of the Spirit. And I will always go back to Samuel, how Prophet Eli taught him how to hear and identify the voice of God. 
And so you see, we need to develop our spirit so we can hear God. But you see, the Bible says that because of all this, he speaks once. And he goes again twice. Yes, we don't understand him. Listen to other translation. How other translation puts it. Is the Bible? Is the English Bible? Listen to how he puts it. God does speak to a man. He speaks to him again and again. But often the man does not listen to him. Oh. He speaks to him again and again. But often the man does not listen to him. And he does not hear the things that God has said. Wow. Sometimes, now watch this Bible. If somebody sitting by, tell the person, watch this Bible. Sometimes, God speaks to a man at night while he is asleep in the bed. He speaks by the things that he dreams about. When God speaks in that way, a man listens to him. Whoa. Let me just stop there. But watch this Bible. The Bible says, God speaks again and again, yet man does not hear him. And man does not listen to what God has said. And so the Bible says, sometimes, sometimes. So he will exhaust speaking to you by his still small voice. Again and again, through other means, either through meditation on the word of God or through the preaching of the word of God or through communicating with someone, he will speak to you by the still small voice. But unfortunately, the Bible says man does not listen. And man does not get even what God said. So he moves to the next step. Sometimes God speaks to man at night. While he is asleep in the bed, he speaks to man at night. So this is what God is doing. I want you to listen to this carefully. I want you to listen to this carefully. See the things God goes through to get your attention. He speaks to you again and again, yet you don't get it. And you do not listen to what he is saying. Because you are so caught up with worldly things, material things. Economic issues, professional assignment. You are caught up with so many things that are challenging to your mind, so you give him no attention. You are so busy in life, and so when God speaks again and again and again, you don't get it. So the Bible says that sometimes you wait when you go to bed. When you go to bed and you are asleep, you are no more thinking about your job. You are no more thinking about your business. You are no more thinking about your children. You are asleep. And then when you are asleep, God comes to you in a dream. Watch this Bible. God comes to you in a dream. And let me explain to you what happens. Now when you dream, it's like God visiting you at night while you are asleep. And he opens up your spirit and he begins to show you pictures. And he begins to show you videos. And the things you see, you, he gives you understanding. It's like video with audio. You see and you hear communication going on in your dream. And sometimes, in the dream, you think it's so real. Oh, yes. Because dreams are spiritual realities. Dreams are spiritual realities. And so, you feel this is so real. And some of the dreams, I know how you feel. You wish that the dream continue and continue and continue and sometimes when you are somebody wakes you up out of your sleep that sweet dream you wish the person had not woken you up sometimes you want to go back to sleep and continue the dream i remember a story a story somebody shared with a friend he said i dreamt about you i dreamed and and he said, the person said, I dreamed and I was flying. I mean, he was flying and he was flying. And then the other partner who was listening to the dream said, oh, then that's good news. And so, oh, yeah, 
I flew and I flew and I flew. Ah! And the person said, Hey, and I be careful. Then it means you are going to die. And then suddenly the dream changed. And when I flew, ah, and I returned back. Now that death had come in, he returned back in a dream. But you see, dreams are spiritual realities. They are spiritual realities. So God waits when we are asleep, then he will open the ears of man and seal the understanding. So he shows you pictures. He shows you video. And I said the other time, you see, we now are so much caught up with PowerPoint, but PowerPoint did not start now. It started from the Bible. In dreams, God was showing pictures. In dreams, God was showing movie, videos. And he was talking and he was teaching. And it's sealing the understanding of men. So watch this Bible. So it is another step by which God communicates to us in dreams. But hear this. The Bible says that it is when he has not gotten your attention by the still small voice. He speaks once speaks again yet man does not understand man does not get it then in the sleep of the night when you are away from all the hustle when you are away from all the trouble all the pain he opened your ears and sealed your instruction so dreams is one of the ways by which god speaks to us. We have a lot of examples in the Bible where people were spoken to, to dreams. And it came to pass. Every one of them came to pass. Number one that I want to touch on briefly was Nebuchadnezzar. We know the story about Nebuchadnezzar. How God gave him a dream. A dream was a dream that was going to punish him. It was going to discipline him was going to become an animal he was going to be given the heart of an animal and he would eat like an animal for seven years until nebuchadnezzar learns that the most high god ruled in the kingdom of men another example is pharaoh pharaoh had a dream and in the dream he saw fat cows fat cows and then he saw another limb cows and then the limb cows ate up the fat cows and he did not understand joseph was released from the prison to come and interpret the dream to him which came as for seven years of abundance and seven years of farming which came to pass we learned about joseph himself joseph had a dream When he had a dream, he told it to his brother, told it to his father. The Bible says his father, even though he rebuked him, but he observed. He observed the fancy man would say, Ozinenua toho. Orishe. There, But the brothers hated him. And they moved from hatred to envy. And they sold him. But you know, like I said, dream is a spiritual reality. And so, even though they sold Joseph out of the place, they could not sell his dream. Because anytime God gives you a dream, it's an internal thing. So Joseph was sold, all right, but the dream went with him. And at the end of the day, when knew what happened, Joseph finally told his brethren when they realized the dream had come to pass and they were scared of Joseph punishing them. Just, they went to back Joseph and Joseph said, Am I in the place of God? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I speak over your life that every dream that God has spoken concerning your life, every promise God has co uh, uh, made concerning your life, for which cause attack has been raising or has been raised against you, I speak in the name of Jesus, that everything that will be used or done against you will rather work for your good. Just as it did for Joseph, may the attack on your life rather hasten your promotion in the name of Jesus. Now we also learned of Joseph, Mary's husband, regarding the birth of Jesus. 
Jesus had been conceived, the wise men have heard of it, and then Herod has also heard of it. Herod wanted to kill the baby Jesus. God came to Joseph in a dream and asked them to take the baby boy out of the place. Even when Joseph wanted to divorce Mary, God spoke to him in a dream and told him, no, this thing is of, of himself, of God. And so dreams are one of the ways that God speaks to us. One of the ways that God speaks to us. And when God speaks to us, ladies and gentlemen, we need to have the right interpretation of the dreams and embark on it. But like I said, it is when God has not gotten your attention through other ways. And of course, God can decide to speak to you also in a dream and also God can cause somebody else to dream about you. God can cause somebody else to dream about you and for the person to carry the information to you. But even that, it has a reason. It has a reason. Even that, God would do that for a reason. All the people I have shown you here, Nebuchadnezzar, Joseph and Joseph Mary's husband God gave them a dream directly and I'm driving at the point listen to me carefully God gave them the dream directly because the dream concerns them it's only when God does not get your attention he will use another person to get back to you so you will, it will, 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 he will get your attention. But even when he does that, it must confirm what is already in you. It must resonate with the voice of God. It must revive a voice, a still small voice, or a dream that God had already shown you. Where would, I will get into deeper as we get to the later part of this sermon. So... So dreams are very important. Dreams are spiritual realities. But I must also say this. It is not every dream. It is not every dream that is godly. It is not every dream that is godly. In other words, it is not every dream that comes from God. There is what is known as the self-induced dreams. And the Bible also talks about that. Self-induced dream. Now, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. So God talks about two things. Don't believe in the prophet and your diviners who prophesy to you. And this is the kind of prophecy that does not come from God. A prophecy that does not come from God. Don't believe in those prophets. And the Bible goes further to say that and don't believe in the dreams you cause yourself to dream. What is the Bible talking about? This is what... It, we call the self-induced dream. They are issues. They are issues you carry to sleep. They are issues you think about, you worry about, you think about, you ponder about whilst you are on your bed. And as you think about them, you sleep off. You sleep off. But you see, this is how the body works. Your mind is the last thing that goes to sleep. Your body can go off. Your body can go off completely, but it takes time for your mind to gradually shut up. For example, if you have an all night or in the night in a church, all night with somebody, there will be somebody sitting by you and whilst others are praying, you will see this person dozing off. This person, you see him sleeping, who has lost control over the body, hitting people front and back. But if you make an attempt to kick the person or to wake the person up, he might even argue with you that he was not sleeping. And if you ask the person, so what did the pastor say sometimes? They are able to repeat the last statement 
of the preacher. Why? Because the body is gone, but it is taking time for the mind to sleep. And that's what happened. So the things that you worry about, the things that you ponder about, you think about, maybe you are thinking about your wedding, you are thinking about your building, you are thinking about something, you are thinking about your new contract, and then as you are doing all that, you slip off, but your mind doesn't go as soon as your body goes. So your mind keeps thinking. Your mind keeps flowing with it. And then you wake up in the morning, you say, I have a dream. The Bible said, don't believe in the dreams you cause yourself to dream. Nevertheless, there is a dream that God gives you. God, when God gives you that dream, you know it is of God and it's coming to pass. So all that I'm saying is that dreams, one of the ways by which God speaks to us, one of the ways by which God speaks to us. The next thing I want to touch on briefly uh, uh, before we close is prophecy. God speaks to us through prophecy. But I must say that prophecy may, may be the last resort. God will not always use prophecy to communicate what he wants to say to us. God will not always use prophecy. When we talk about prophecy, it's somebody speaking to you, standing in front of you, or a preacher prophesying over your life or making or telling you the mind of God. But you see, what I'm saying, this is God will not oftentimes use it until he has exhausted the private ways of communicating with you. Even though by his sovereignty, he can choose to do that. But oftentimes, because God is the God of protocol and God respects people, respects you and your policy, he will not always bring issues concerning your life into public. He will not always. Even though by his sovereignty, he can prophesy or speak to you in public. But God will oftentimes use other means still small voice or communicate to you in a dream or do say something to you like he did in the case was in the case of Nebuchadnezzar he dreamt but he did not even understand I mean remember the dream to understand it but God showed it to Daniel and then Daniel came back to Nebuchadnezzar and said a dream and interpreted the dream to him God respects your privacy and so God will want to deal with your private issues we want to deal with your private issues privately listen to don't don't forget don't forget our key scripture that he speaks again and again but man does not get it and then he moves to dreams and visions in the night when you are asleep and he speaks to you Prophecies are one of the ways that God communicates to us. But we must also assess and scrutinize every prophecy that comes to us. Like I said, it's almost the last thing. But unfortunately, in the body of Christ today, it has become the first. It has become the first thing everyone will want to resort to. So people want to hear the voice of God. We want to know what God is saying about them they have to consult a prophet they have to consult a man of God they have to consult somebody to tell them about what God intends for their life it, it shows immaturity it shows immaturity in the body of Christ and God wants us to deal with such immaturity in the body of Christ and so we must develop ourselves we must develop sensitivity to the voice of the Spirit of God so when God speaks to us we can hear him when he speaks to us in a dream we can understand him Don't permit me to go into all the details even with the dreams and 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 even with the prophecies but one thing I would also want to say regarding dreams is that the dreamer the dreamer is the best person to interpret the dreams I repeat that for free. The dreamer of the dream is the best person to understand the dream or to interpret the dream. If it is beyond that person, 
then the second person can come in. Why? Because anytime God gives you a dream, he will use things that you are covenant with. He will use things that you are familiar with. So by the understanding of those things you are familiar with, it will help you understand the dream. So if you are familiar with things God has used to speak to you, and the next person is not familiar with it, he cannot interpret the dream. Except the person is also familiar with those things. But let's come back to prophecy. And so when you receive prophecy, a prophecy is coming through a man. Now hear this. It's coming through somebody else. Now anytime God communicates to people, anytime God communicates through people, don't forget, they receive it in their spirit, but they must engage their mind to be able to interpret you to somebody else. And sometimes that is where the problem is. When the mind has to be engaged, that is where sometimes the problem is. And sometimes the person may be able to say it right. Other times the person may communicate the right message but may add his own understanding to it. And other times the person may even have it completely wrong. And that is why every prophecy that comes to you, you must assess it. You must scrutinize it. You must check it out with the word of God. Listen to this scripture. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 and 20. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that matter should not the people seek unto their God for the living to the dead to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them period to the law and to the testimony if any prophecy comes, if anything comes, any word that supposedly is coming from God through another person, if it is not in line with the word of God, the Bible says it is because there's no spirit in them. Refuse it. That's why last week I said, <clears throat> when you go to church, oh Lord help me, you go to prayer meetings and you go to church and you hear people say, let us pray and there is a witch in your family there, your mother is this your auntie is this <clears throat> your uncle is this let us pray and kill them look God is not an author of confusion God did not send us to come and divide families God did not send any pastor any prophet to come and break people's family apart and so when somebody tells you your mama is a witch. Why weren't you chewed when he gave birth to you? When somebody tells you, your auntie is the one who is bewitching you. And so they give us prayer topic. Let us pray and kill them. Pray and kill them. Check the Bible. These are the things I'm talking about. When you are given a word, prophecy, to do some things, or as we say, a country, and somebody will die immediately if you tell you it's not from God. Any man of God that will lead you to pray for somebody to die, he is not matured. When I was young, an immature pastor, I used to pray that, those prayers. But now that I have matured and I know the truth from the word of God, there is no way. The disciples of Jesus wanted to kill like that. And they made reference to Elias as Elias killed. And Jesus rebuked them. Jesus rebuked them and said, you don't know the kind of spirit that you people have. Because the Son of Man did not come to destroy man's life, but to save many alive. Who are you to think that somebody is a witch and so you have to pray and kill it? This is what I call charismatic witchcraftsy. Charismatic witchcraft. We have no mandate to kill anybody, rather to save them. As a matter of fact, if you are a child of God, if you are indeed a child of God, and you know who you are in Christ, 
when a witch meets you, one of you must give way. And if you're a child of God, a witch must give way to you. So don't believe in such prophecies. And I'm saying to you, don't believe in such prophecies. They ask you to go and kill so you will be free. Forgetting that the spirit is using the people. And so when the people die, the spirits don't die. They will get into somebody else. So what is this business of killing people? Even prophecies must be assessed. Prophecies must be scrutinized. We must judge it by the word of God. If they do not attest to this law and testimony, it is because there's no spirit in them. Let me conclude by saying these few things to you. What the New Testament prophecy is not. New Testament prophecy, number one, and hear me carefully. New Testament prophecy does not impart fear. When God speaks to you now, he does not speak to you to frighten you. God does not impart fear unto us. Fear is of the devil. And so any prophecy that imparts fear, you must assess it by the word of God. He has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. The Bible calls it spirit of bondage. Bondage to fear. And so prophecy, New Testament prophecy, does not create fear, impart fear into you. So any prophecy that to impart fear to you, reject it. And oftentimes, such people will, will use fear. Fear to enslave you. Fear, they tell you things to enslave you. Things beyond your understanding. Fear grips you. So you always resort to them. You will always go back to them for them to help you. No wonder a lot of people have been enslaved in some of these churches. And God does not use prophecy to embarrass you. God, New Testament prophecy, God will not give prophecy to embarrass you in public and you call people in public and you say all kinds of things to them and by the time the prophecy is done, the person doesn't know whether he should follow Christ again or not. Prophecy does not come to embarrass you. New Testament prophecy does not come to embarrass you. New Testament prophecy does not come to exalt a man of God. Does not come to make a man of God bigger, more powerful than he is. As a matter of a New Testament prophecy, rather humbles a man. Makes the man of God humble. That he himself needs God. To depend on God. New Testament prophecy does not divide families. I've said that already. It does not divide families apart. Anyone that tries to prophesy over your life to divide your family is not from God. It's not from God. You better stay away. And finally, I've also said under charismatic witchcraft, New Testament prophecy does not instruct you to go and kill somebody. Isn't it a pity? You have a lot of trouble yourself. You have a lot of issues you have to deal with, but you come to church, and for one hour, that you have to concentrate on communicating to God on your personal issues, dealing with your trouble, you are praying and killing somebody. For one hour, killing somebody. Can I ask you a question? You started killing this person five years ago, and this person is still alive and doing better. Hasn't that been a waste of time? Hasn't that been a waste of time? All those years of praying, killing, 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 killing. You could have prayed to better your life. You could have prayed, communicated to God to correct certain things in you. If we learn to hear God for ourselves, we will no longer be children tossed to and fro. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, sorry, verse 3, yeah, verse 3 says, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation and comfort and not to impart fear and to kill people. New Testament prophecy. Prophecy must come to edify, to exhort, and to comfort, and not to divide families. And not to make you see everybody around you as a witch. Sometimes, even in a church, you see your Christian sister, and you think your Christian sister is a witch. And so, we, people get to a town when they are pregnant, they don't want to go to church because witches in church will see them that they are pregnant. 
I pray that deliverance will come to you as you mature in the word of God. But finally, I just want to let you know this series we brought to you is to help you become a better person, a better Christian, knowing your right from the left. So you will no longer be a child in the kingdom of God tossed to and fro. I came to let you know by the word of God that God talks to you every day and that we need to, be, we need to develop our sensitivity to the voice of God in us. And God will always talk to you from inside from within you because he lives within you he speaks to you just like he speaks to all of us he speaks to you it's only when you do not hear him you do not hear his voice you do not understand him that he will now speak to you from the outside to appeal to your mind because your mind it will be easy for you to understand but when we can develop our spirit man to understand the inspirations of god Ladies and gentlemen, we will walk in miracles every day. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Man does not understand, but in the sleep, in the vision of the night, in the dream, he openeth their ears and sealeth their instruction. It is when he has not gotten your attention, he moves to the other ones to talk to you. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help all of us. May the Lord help us to mature and to depend on him. Him alone and not any other person. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to uh, end here. And, and those of you who have been sending your questions, hopefully next week we would answer those questions and make sure that you have a perfect understanding of all the series, six-part series we have dealt with. But before I end this, I want to give you an opportunity to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are blessed and you want to give your life to Jesus, will you please say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I confess all my sins and I ask for forgiveness. I receive you, Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. us with our spiritual tools in our hands let us begin to dig out the truth of the word of God for ourselves